Hi there. Have you ever felt like your heart was racing just at the thought of attending a social gathering? Well, you're not alone. And it's not just about language barriers. Welcome to a special podcast today that goes beyond the grammar and vocabulary of English. A few weeks ago, I mentioned something called social anxiety in a podcast. That was podcast 648 on small talk. And I was suggesting that if you learn to be good at small talk, then this is helpful with social anxiety. Well, I promised that I would talk some more about social anxiety. And today, here it is. I'm going to describe the problem. Then you can see whether you have it or not, or you know someone who does. It's something that I work with in my therapy practice. So today, while your brain is learning English, let's dive into the intricacies of social anxiety, a reality faced daily by many people. I'll talk today about what it is, what it feels like. And if you're interested in how to cure it, get in touch. Let me know and I'll talk about this in a future podcast. And if you stick around to the end, I'll reveal something about social anxiety that may really surprise you. So come with me on a journey of language learning. Your brain will be learning English while we're doing this, of course. But intertwined with social insights. Before I do any of that, have you done our free course, The Seven Rules of Adept English? What? You haven't? Well, you're missing out on some really important advice and tips for learning English and how to make the best use of our podcasts. Go to our website and sign up today. It's free. That's at adeptenglish.com. You'll be really glad you did this. So first of all, vocabulary. When we say social, S-O-C-I-A-L, what do we mean? Well, it refers to everything that involves interaction with other people. And when we socialise, you and I are actively engaging with others. That's the verb to socialise, S-O-C-I-A-L-I-S-E. If you're someone who likes to socialise, then you like being around other people, knowing other people, interacting with other people, doing things with other people. And if you're around lots of other people and you're very busy with it, we might say that you're a social butterfly. How much socialising we like to do versus how much time we like to spend alone, well, that varies enormously between people. But if you have social anxiety, it means that doing these types of things instead of being pleasurable, well, they fill you with fear. Anxiety, A-N-X-I-E-T-Y, is the word we tend to use in English. Anxiety is a state which can be a low level or a high level fear. How common is it? Well, the NICE guidelines in the UK quote US statistics that say that around 12% of the US population will be affected by social anxiety at some time in their lives. And the UK website, social-anxiety-org, says about 13.3% of the general population may meet criteria for social anxiety disorder at some point in their lives. With the male-to-female ratio being 2 to 3. So there's more of it amongst women. I do think there's an interesting cultural element too to social anxiety. The culture that you grow up in can influence it. There's perhaps another podcast idea. 